All right, guys, we are going to do the section 1.5, linear equation and inequality. So, <clears throat> let's try to solve the example number one. And this example number one, what you have to do is you need to distribute your two and you need to distribute your negative one. Okay, when you do that, you end up to have a 4 plus 10x minus 12 equal 1 minus 3x minus 7 which is going to give me a 10x minus 8 equal 10x minus 8 equal um, negative 6 minus 3x I'm going to add 3x both side and I'm going to add 8 both side by doing so the 8 disappear and the 3x disappear uh, on each side and now I'm able to have on only one side only the variable x and on the other side the non-variable term which is in this, in this case 2. So x is, is going to be equal to 2 over 13. Now if I want to solve the example number 2 I, I can notice two things. First of all 7 is 7 over 1. So it's also a fraction. Why do I look uh, at the denominator? Because I want to find the LCD. To find the LCD, it is pretty simple. I'm going to, first of all, write each denominator and completely factorize each of them. When I completely factorize each of them, I will be able to define the LCD based on the definition of your LCD. So, 3 is going to be 3, 6 is going to be 3 by 2, and 1 is going to be 1. So, my LCD, based on the definition, we're saying that... <coughs> It is the, pro it is the uh, product of each factor with the highest power. In that case, I'm going to have 3 by 2 by 1. <coughs> so, if I multiply by 6 the first fraction, <coughs> and I'm going to use a parenthesis right here, minus 6 times... And basically, I multiply by 6 both sides of my equation. 5x plus 8 divided by 6 equal, and I'm going to have 6 times 7. I'm going to have my 6 divided by 3 give me 2. My 6 divided by 6 give me 1. And then on this side, I'm going to have 42. And now, I'm going to have a, <coughs> I'm going to have a 2x plus 4 minus 5x minus 8 equal 42 so I'm getting a minus 3x minus 4 equal 42 I'm going to add 4 both sides so minus 3x equal 46 and so x is going to be equal to negative 46 divided by 3 alright so now let's focus on the inequality <coughs> When you have to deal with an inequality, one of the first rules you need to remember is always read the inequality. Always read the inequality by always read the inequality by starting. from the variable okay for instance this one right here is going to be this one right here is going to be x less than 2 and this one also is going to be x less than 2 okay when for the number 1 on the top it's going to be x greater than 2. Alright, let's try to do the example number 4. If I want to do the example number 4, what I'm going to do is exactly the same thing than previously. So I'm going to have a 4x plus 8 less than equal than 2x minus 10. So I'm going to subtract minus 2x both side, and I'm going to uh, subtract 8 both side. My symbol doesn't change, and I end up to have 
2x on the left side, and I'm going to have negative 18. I divide by 2, I divide by a positive number, so my symbol doesn't change, and I'm getting x less than equal than negative 9. Alright guys, I'll let you do, do the example number 5, as well as the example number 6, uh, on your own. Alright, so let's take a look at this page 3, apparently page 3 is nothing, I should get rid of this page next time. And uh, let's try to look at the example number 3. If I want to solve an equation, the idea is uh, very simple. The idea is just to understand that what we are looking at is, is uh, So, uh, what do we have is the following things. We just need to see that if I call y 1, equal x plus 1, and if I call y2, the equation minus x plus 2, when I have basically y1 equal y2, I'm looking for the point of intersection, and the point of intersection will be the solution of this equation, okay? So, the point of intersection will be the solution of the equation. I'll let you read the example number three and how you can use your calculator and you uh, will tell me if you have any difficulty in class. Now let's jump on the example number four um, and how to solve the example number four together. All right. All right. So what we are going to do is we are going to distribute the two, okay, and then try to combine like term to ice to be able to isolate x at the end. So let's do that. And I'm going to have a three x minus four x minus eight less than equal than two x plus one. This gives me a minus x minus 8 less than equal than 2x plus 1. I'm going to uh, subtract minus 2x, subtract minus 2x, because some of you might want to do that. There is no specific rule. And I'm going to add 8, and I'm going to add 8. Now, what I have is very simple. The 2x disappear right here, and the 8 disappear right there, and I'm getting a minus 3x less than equal than 9. Now, I need when you have minus 3x and less than equal than 9, I need to divide by negative 3. I need to divide by negative 3. Because you are dividing by a negative number, that means you need to flip your symbol, and now you get an x greater than equal than 3, than negative 3. Now, if I want to represent the interval notation, it's going to be very simple. First of all, I need to represent my number line. Then I'm going to plot my zero. And then from this zero, I know that my negative three will be on the left of my, of my zero. Now, because x is greater, I need to go, oops, x is greater. See? Making a tiny mistake right here. So x is greater. That, in, that means I need to go to the right and I'm going to the right to the my, to the plus infinity <clears throat> and because there is an equal in my symbol I'm going to use a bracket and that says that the interval notation is going to be bracket 3 bracket negative 3 comma 0 uh, comma infinity comma plus infinity and I will always have a parenthesis next to infinity I can do exactly the same thing on this example number 5. On this example number 5, what do we have? We have a fraction. So I need to define my LCD, and my LCD is going to be negative 3, because if there is only minus, th minus negative 3 and 1 as denominator. So I multiply by negative 3 both sides of my inequality. Okay? And when I do that, on the left side, negatively divide out, and I end up to just have to 
distribute this negative 3, so I need to have a parenthesis right here to not to forget to distribute both terms. And at the end of the day, I end up to have negative 6x plus 9 less than x plus 2. So I'm going to add 6x, I'm going to add 6x and subtract 2, subtract 2. My symbol doesn't change because I'm adding or subtracting. It never change when I add, when I add, subtract, or multiply and div or divide by a positive number. So far, I end up to have my 6x divide out, my 2 divide out. I'm having a 7x right here, and I'm having a 7 right there. I divide by a positive number 7, so my symbol doesn't change, and I end up to have a x greater than 1. Now, again, my number line, I put my 0. I know 1 will be on the right side. Because it's greater, because x is greater, I'm going toward to the right, toward to plus infinity. And because I have no equal in my symbol, I will have a parenthesis. So far, I'm going to have parenthesis 1 plus infinity, and always a parenthesis next to infinity. Alright guys, I'll let you do the problem number 6 and 7 by yourself. And um, see you in class for trying to work on this section 1.5.